Hey folks, Internet Dude here. Hey, I'm back again here and uh, I'm going to give you another Tesla video. And I was thinking that, you know, I, I could probably do a good news, bad news type Tesla video. Uh, so first off, the good news. Uh, Tesla actually put in a bunch of superchargers in Saskatchewan. I'd given you a video before when I saw some progress uh, back in 2019. But uh, just before Christmas, the uh, Saskatchewan superchargers went online and they're all V3, which is good for Model 3 owners. And uh, so I've actually used all of them multiple times with the exception of Maple Creek, which seems to be still down or having some troubles. And uh, I also haven't checked out the uh, Whitewood ones because I really don't go east very often. But uh, I do tend to go up to Saskatoon and I've already made a couple trips to Calgary recently. Uh, so that's the good news. Um, Tesla, uh, I think, will be getting better as well in 2020 here because they have a job posting for a mobile technician, which I mentioned in a previous video. So things are moving in the right direction. And then they have more coming soon supercharger dots uh, for Saskatoon and uh, on the highway to Edmonton. So whether or not that actually will be 2020, uh, we'll see. The, the ones that were put in, the superchargers uh, so far, um, initially Elon had tweeted about it in 2017, like, oh, it should be finished by the end of 2017. That didn't happen. And then they went on to the actual Tesla official map in 2018, coming soon, target date, end of 2018. They missed that, but they did get it by 2019. So anyway, that's the, uh, the Tesla good news. All right, and I guess this would kind of count as bad news uh, to me, but uh, the bad news is I had another um, problem with my car. Uh, so as I mentioned, the superchargers came on line in uh, December, and this car here, which is my 2015 Model S 85D, um, I took it to the supercharger because in the past I'd had some issues with charging when it was cold out. And in fact, I had made a video back in February of 2018 um, showing I couldn't charge when I was connected to a 50 amp outlet. And so I thought, well, you know, superchargers are a little bit different, so I should be able to plug in there. The car wasn't even super cold because it had been in my heated garage, but I took it over the supercharger, plugged it in, and it wouldn't charge. And I thought, well, I'll leave it there, right? Let it do its thing. It's going to warm up the battery, whatever. Uh, long story short, after two and a half hours, just went and picked up the car and was like, okay, uh, like it won't supercharge when it's cold. So I contacted Tesla support and uh, the mobile tech, uh, Canada East, got in touch with me and just said, hey, I looked at your logs and there seems to be some high voltage type errors and you'll have to take your car to the service center. So what that means is, A, I'm out of warranty uh, and B, I got to go to Calgary and hopefully I can supercharge. So kind of a longer story short, um, I wound up taking the car to Calgary, um, getting a loaner. Initially they told me that they believed the battery heater had failed. And uh, so they gave me an estimate of about $1,100 to replace the battery heater. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, I, I told them, hey, I reported this in February, 2018. I'd called Tesla Roadside Service about it. And they're like, well, we'll look into that and see, you know. And uh, so then they called me back and they're like, well, we have, you know, there's no record of this, like you, you telling us. And um, so that was that. And uh, so then anyway, next day, uh, they replaced the battery heater and determined there may be another fuse that's involved in the system. And so they changed those two parts and they're like, hmm, there's actually something else wrong. And uh, you should just take the loaner car and go back home. So that's what I did. Uh, it was about a nine and a half hour drive with charging or so. So I made the trip there for just like a day or two and then I came back. And then about a week and a half later, they called me and they're like, okay, yeah, we got it all fixed up. Uh, it turns out the problem was the high voltage junction box. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen and there'll be a link in the description to where I got this photo. Uh, but anyway, the high voltage junction box controls uh, some 400 volt things such as the um, battery heater, uh, the cabin heater, and the uh, air conditioning system. Now I've never had a problem with the other things, so it, 
that it must have just been part of the high voltage junction box that failed. So good news here is they said because we didn't diagnose it correctly as the battery heater initially, uh, we're not going to charge you for that. Obviously, the bad news is I had to, you know, make a couple trips to get this fixed. But in the end, they, they wound up charging me to replace the high voltage junction box, which instead of an $1,100 bill, $826 for uh, parts and labor. So, you know, like I say, kind of good news, bad news here. But uh, the good news is that the car is completely sorted. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's uh, not giving me any problems since then. And I definitely noticed that the battery will warm up when you're charging. Like you, you know, the regen limit seems to be the big indicator. If you're having issues uh, in the cold, if you see a regen limit, uh, your charge speed is gonna be pretty low no matter what you're plugged into. Yeah, so that uh, pretty much covers it. That's kind of the good news, bad news uh, Tesla edition. I guess uh, for the P100D, I have that 2018 P100D. It's also red. Uh, the issue with that one um, was the repeater camera on the left side. Um, they were going to replace that, and uh, the first time they brought it, it was damaged, so they couldn't replace it, the mobile tech. Uh, second time the mobile tech came, he uh, lost the camera, so he wasn't able to change that. And then um, there was a light rattle noise from the suspension when going over bumps. And I would mentioned in a previous video that they replaced the front air shocks. That fixed the problem temporarily and that, that sound is back. So they had replaced the stabilizer or sway bar end links uh, and that didn't make the problem go away. So uh, the P100D has, uh, I guess, two outstanding issues and they more or less told me they're not going to replace the air shocks. They can't fix that rattle until there's an updated part and we don't know when that'll be. So. Anyway, the old car is uh, totally sorted and, and uh, yeah, still running great, actually. So gave it a quick wash today and uh, it's looking a little better. We're kind of in that, uh, that weather here in Saskatchewan where, you know, it's getting close to freezing at times, which is unusually warm. And for the most part, the cars are disgusting, like every car. So yeah, um, that's kind of it for Tesla news here lately. I've been uh, thinking about maybe doing a video uh, just because this car is out of warranty and it's been out of warranty for about 10 months already. And I'm thinking maybe about that one year mark, you know, when I've had it five years, uh, one year out of warranty, maybe I'll do a follow up video. So if you'd like to see that, just uh, leave me a comment below, let me know. But I can kind of uh, go over some of the costs I've had as out of pocket repairs and uh, what the difference would have been if I had purchased the extended warranty. There's there's some pros and cons to to that extended warranty. So I can give you some input from uh, speaking from experience. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And uh, thanks for watching.